As the clock ticks and the year changes, we're turning our minds towards one thing, prayer. Join leaders of our community daily at 714 a.m. virtually for a time of prayer. As we come together, we're encouraging everyone to fast and seek God's face for 21 days. We're together. We're united. Lex United 21 Days of Prayer, January 3rd through 23rd. Follow Mario G. Ratton for notifications and updates. Hello, I'm Dr. Felix Williams, pastor of the Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church uh, here in Lexington, and I also serve as president of um, Progressive National Baptist Convention's Congress of Christian Education uh, in America and in the Caribbean. And uh, we thank God for this opportunity to share this topic with you. We encourage you to share this uh platform with others under the um, hashtag of Lex United, hashtag Lex United. The biblical foundation uh, for our assigned theme today comes from Hebrews 11th chapter and the first verse. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen hope for not seeing faith. The main component that God has made available to us to get us through whatever we're going through is through the reality of faith. We all are familiar with the word faith. Folk who are even non-believers know something about the word Faith, but not everybody, really, not everybody, including Christians, know as much as they need to know about the word faith. We don't understand what it means. We don't really know how to operate in faith. We all, however, know that we need faith. I mean, across the board, everybody will attest and agree that we know that we need faith, but most of us don't really know how to maneuver in faith and operate in faith and and how to operate in it and walk in it. And you need to understand uh, why it's so very important for the Christian believer because faith is vital to your walk with God. What is faith? And this definition is not original with me, but I read it and I thought I'd use it for this hour. Faith is a supernatural power of God made available to you so you can transform conditions, circumstances, and situations based upon the will of God. Faith is a supernatural power of God that is made available to every believer, every believer who has at his or her disposal the supernatural power of God. And when you walk in faith, that that supernatural power of God enters into the timeline of of your life in order to change conditions, uh, change circumstances, change situations based upon the will of God. Now look at Romans 10 and 17. And there there you'll find, and I know all y'all are familiar with this word, find these words. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We we know that scripture, but, but, but let's think about it. The word of God is the will of God and the word of God is God's will for the life of the believer. So if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then that means that faith is inextricably connected to God's word which is our understanding of God's will, which means then that faith can only be released where the will of God is known. And the will of God is known when you hear his word. His word is his will and his will is in his word. And if faith comes by his word that I hear, then I cannot release faith 
if I don't know his word, because if I don't know his word, I don't know his will. And faith is not connected to my wants or to my wishes or to my desires. Faith is connected only to God's will. So if faith is connected to the will of God, if faith is having excess to the supernatural power of God, then faith on the contrary is not positive thinking. Positive thinking is a mental and emotional attitude that focuses on optimistic and positive thoughts and also that expects positive results. And just because you have positive thoughts doesn't mean you have a practicing faith. People can have positive thinking who don't believe in God. Faith is much more than positive thinking. Faith is supernatural power of God to change anything that is in line with the will of God. Faith is the power of God to change anything that is in line with his will. Hebrew 11 and 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Watch the text. Now we just we just we just came out of Christmas season and we know what all of that entails, but if you remember when you were a child, and that might be asking much for many of y'all, it just might be a challenge, but but if you remember when you was a child, it was a and it was Christmas time, uh, you were young, you were both excited and you were anxious. You would be excited because Christmas was soon approaching and you knew you were getting gifts, but you knew some things would be a surprise. You knew some things you were going to get for sure because your parents asked you what you wanted. But you also knew that there were going to be some things you didn't expect. So you were excited about what you knew you were going to get, but you were positively anxious because you knew you were going to get more than what you asked for. So Christmas combined two feelings. It combined assurance and it combined anticipation. It combined assurance that I know I'm going to get something because my folks asked me. So I have an assurance on Christmas that I'm going to get a blessing, but I also have anticipation because I know they have something for me they haven't told me about. And it's the same way with faith. When you operate in faith, there is the assurance of things not seen. And then there is the anticipation of things you're assured of because you know that God has exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ever ask or think when you operate in the arena of faith. It is confidence. How do you know you're going to receive gifts at Christmas? Because previous experiences with the character of my parents has taught me that I get blessed on Christmas. So based on my knowing the character of the gift giver and getting gifts from the past experience, I can roll forward ahead or preview a day I haven't seen yet with an assurance that I'm going to get blessed. That is what faith is. I'm about through here. Faith says that uh, and that's why the writer goes on to say, if you come to God, you got to believe that he is. And there it is right there. You got to believe because when I know the character of God and connect what I know about his character with previous previous experiences I've had with God, I walk into faith knowing that God is going to bless me because I trust his character and I remember his previous experiences. Verse 6 says, if you are coming to God, you got to believe that he is and that he is truly a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
Now, those are two different things. Faith is not about reward. Faith is confirmation that you know who God is. If you come to God, the writer says, you must come, number one, believing that he is, which means I don't get rewards until I affirm and confirm that he is. So contrary, yes, to a lot of teaching, the purpose of your faith is not to get stuff. The purpose of your faith is to confirm through your action and attitude in the midst of the perplexities of life that you still know God is. Faith is not the abracadabra to get something. Faith is the tool we use to give tangible expression and evidence through our attitude and actions that we know who God is. And when I have evidentiary information that I know who God is, knowing who he is by my action and attitude releases the hand of God to then reward me for knowing who he is. And too many church folk in this day of modernity and contemporaneity want the release of the hand of God, they don't know. And that's the problem with this new age church that is selfish and materialistic. We want God to release the hand of his blessings on us. And we've done nothing, especially during this pandemic, to exemplify that we know the God whose hand we want to release. You got to know that he is. Can I ask y'all a question? Do you know who he is? I'm talking about the God who threw stars up against the sky that appeared like diamonds on black velvet. That's the God I'm talking about. Do you know who he is? I'm talking about the God who spoke to the waters and the waters rose up and spoke to the fish and the fish started to swim. That's who God is. He is and not he was. He is. He never was and he never will be. He's an is when he was and he is what he is and he always will be is. He's just is. And when I can affirm and confirm that through the tangible expression of my actions and my attitude, it releases the hand of God because God said, well, now I can give you some stuff because you've shown me in attitude as well in action that you don't think or see me as a genie or as an infinitesimal Santa Claus who rides the sled from glory to serve you what you want on a silver platter and a spoon. You display through your attitude and actions in the midst of problems, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of a fatal pandemic, that you know who I am. So I know that when I bless you, it's not going to change you. And that you understand that you're not getting blessed to get a reward. You are getting blessed because I is. This may not be good grammar, but it sounds good and it makes sense. I bless him because he is. I praise him in the words of my grandson. Uh, I praise him because I is. I worship him because I is. I wake up in the morning because I is. I, I praise his name every day because I is. That's what I is. That's what I do. I look at the rain and say him is. I look at the snow and, the, and, the, and say him is. I look at the sun and I say him is. I look at the moon and the stars shining so bright and I say him is. My wife and I flew out the, the West Coast a few years ago and saw the sun on one side and snow-capped mountains on the other side. And I said him is. Him is. Him is. Yes, him is. He is all that I need. Yes, him is. Those that diligently and actively and assiduously and conscientiously and constantly seek his isness, he will reward. So, the starting point is believer 
who believes in God's character, ending point is believing in God's promise. In other words, the starting point for faith is to trust his character. He is. He is. And I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what life is trying to suggest to me. He is. My trouble, yes, and problems does not cancel the isness of God. And God does not have different levels of manifested isness. God is not more God when I have less problems. God is not less God when I have more problems. God is the fullness of the Godhead when I'm catching hell or when all is well. And see, that's why the Bible can command you and I to bless the Lord at all times and give thanks to him in all things because the isness of God does not change with the vicissitudes of life. But aren't you glad today? Everything else changes except his isness. Life changes and marriages range from hot to lukewarm to cold. Money gets funny. Children fluctuates. Job satisfaction fluctuates. Prayer life fluctuates. Bible study fluctuates. Faith fluctuates. Trust fluctuates. Ministry fluctuates. But the one thing that remains consistent in the midst of the fickle fluctuations of life is that God still is. He just is. So when I establish the character, then the end of it all is I believe his promises. He will do what he says he will do, no matter what it looks like now. To believe in the character and the promises of God means that I say God will do exactly what he said he will do, no matter what things look like right now. God doesn't own his promises based on our problem. He doesn't call an impromptu board meeting with the Trinity to decide whether or not they can do something based on the veracity and the volume of your problem. God says, I don't care what your life looks like right now. But what I need you to do is to stand on the character and the promises of my word that no matter what it looks like right now, I will do exactly what I said I would do. And to believe that is what makes faith so powerful because you're standing with the sagacity and the audacity on something that doesn't make sense. So here is a challenge as I close. You have to believe that the things that are irrational are true. The challenge is that I have to believe by faith to stand in the middle of irrationality and claim and believe by faith that it's true. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Lex United, 21 Days of Prayer. January 3rd through 23rd. Follow Mario B. Radley for notifications and updates.